I have a Game Boy Pocket here and as you can see the screen is really not the standard anymore and in this video I'm going to fix that with a nice IPS kit so let's take a look what this kit actually comes with. Opening up the envelope we firstly have a touch sensor. There's also a separate bit of wire in here that are required but the touch sensor itself isn't quite required and we'll get to that later. Pulling more things out of the envelope this is the ribbon cable that actually connects to the IPS screen and where most of the magic happens and these seem to be getting more and more complex and and I absolutely love it. So what else does this kit come with? Well if we have a dig around there's a few more bits that it does come with such as some foam spacer. This is actually like a sticky back adhesive to hold the screen in. You don't need to look at this too in depth but what else is there? There's also a nice glass screen lens and not a shoddy plastic one. My version does actually have the LED so I made sure to get the one with the LED hole because there is two versions of that. And lastly digging around in the envelope there is the IPS screen itself. No I'm not going to throw this one off screen because I'm may actually break it. Not to mention I also purchased a brand new shell for this because the old one's a bit tatty and it will save me quite a lot of time with the installation process but more on that later. It also comes with a nice replacement label but I probably won't use that. The first thing I like to do when I get kits like this is try my best to test them without fully assembling it first just in case there is an issue with the kit itself. So let's remove all the screws from the back of the Game Boy Pocket. With all the screws removed, we can remove the rear half of the shell. Something you may have noticed is what is that at the bottom right? Well, if you haven't, you've definitely looked now. And because you've looked now, you have to look for the iCard on the video on what that is. Trust me, it's interesting. Next, I'm going to unlock the old ribbon cable by pushing both tabs on the connector. For whatever reason, sometimes when you do one side, the other side decides to lock itself again. Disconnecting the screen ribbon cable and moving our attention down to the bottom half of the Game Boy to remove the three Phillips screws securing the board down in place. With that all removed, I can now take this fully out and then move this half out of the way. Removing the little protective layer on the screen itself. This is quite satisfying to do, must admit. Positioning the ribbon cable in place then positioning the screen and just popping and pushing down the connectors in place. Because I'm only doing this for the purposes of test, I'm just going to use a spacer to make sure it doesn't short onto my Game Boy. Then I can attach this ribbon cable to the Game Boy itself, making sure to lock the connector in place and just bend in the inbuilt touch sensor up slightly. Unfortunately, soldering is required, so I am gonna solder a wire on, but I'm not gonna do it perfectly, because again, we're just trying to test the kit. So heating up this joint and adding some fresh solder on the power switch, and then tinning the pad marked power on the ribbon cable itself. Getting the provided wire, I can then join these two places together with the wire. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. With that all in place, I'm actually going to put the rear half of the shell on, but being very extra careful and only placing it down on the bottom half and leaving it to rest at the top. This allows me to put batteries in without actually breaking the ribbon cable wire mod that I've just done. With both batteries in, I can reach in with my tweezers to switch it on, and it looks like my screen is working, which is great. However, let's just check to make sure the touch sensor also works. And it looks like it is changing colour, so that is also great. So let's install this properly, starting with taking a look at the front half of the shell. As you can see on my left is the original transparent one, and on my right is my new replacement one. If you don't buy a new replacement one with pre-cut areas, on your original one you have to cut out the following area, basically the entire ring around the screen for the new screen to fit. This is a lengthy process but I decided just to buy this one, it didn't cost too much extra and it will save me a lot of time. Flipping over this half of the shell, we're going to look at putting in the new glass screen lens, so removing the protective film and the 3M layer to actually reveal the screen itself, then removing the other 3M layer round the borders, revealing the sticky adhesive, then I can pop this into place and stick it down onto the new shell. With that in place, I can flip it back over and get that foam insert that I mentioned before. This is actually a sticky layer to hold the screen in, so I want to pop out the inside bit, just leaving the outer border. With that left, I want to peel off one of the sides so that I can stick it into the shell. I'm just going to pop it into place and just put some pressure all around. This will never be perfect because it's actually quite hard to stick down. 
Then I can remove the other layer, revealing the sticky adhesive, and remove the protective film on the screen and insert it into the Game Boy. Grabbing the IPS screen ribbon cable, we can then put it on the back of the screen and just fold over and attach the screen once more to the ribbon cable. Then carefully lifting the ribbon cable back up, there's actually another 3M adhesive that helps to secure it down to the screen itself. So peel this off and then stick it down as straight as possible so that it can connect to the Game Boy perfectly fine. With the screen in, we now want to put all of the buttons back into the shell and also the conductive pads. Because my Game Boy has that additional mod that I mentioned earlier, I also have a sticky back adhesive for my new speaker, so I'm putting this in also. For some reason this kit doesn't come with an adhesive layer, or at least mine didn't, to protect the ribbon cable from shorting against the Game Boy board itself, so I'm just going to use a bit of Kapton tape and cover the whole circuit board. With that covered now, I'm going to pop in the Game Boy Pocket motherboard and then secure it down three Phillips screws at the bottom half of the board. With that secured, we can then bend and pop in the new ribbon cable into the connector and lock it into place. With it locked into place, we can remove the layer on the touch sensor to reveal the adhesive and stick it down onto the new shell. Then getting the same wire used previously, I'm going to solder it to the ribbon cable itself, but this time in a bit more of a neater, more permanent way. I'm then going to bend it into shape so it fits snugly on the boards and attach it to the power switch pin. And that's pretty much the installation complete, so I'm going to put the rear half of the shell back on and then put in all the screws for it. I have a question here on what I should do on this console. Should I stick on the brand new unofficial sticker or should I save the old one despite its flaws and put it on because it's still official? Let me know in the comments down below. Putting in some AAA batteries to test. Putting on the battery cover. And then inserting my Game Boy test game. We're now at the most satisfying part of the build, which is removing the protective layer on the front of the screen. Look how gorgeous that is. Turning on the Game Boy Pocket, let's see if it still works, and it does, so that is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to run a full test on my game card just to make sure I've not broken anything, and then let's start going over the features of this IPS screen. The contrast wheel actually becomes the brightness wheel now, and this screen can get quite bright and quite dark which is great if you want to save battery or if you want to play in the dark. Not only that, but the touch sensor changes the color palette and there is a lot of color palettes. So I'm going to flick through as many as I can right now without boring you too much. But it's honestly amazing how many different color palettes there is. As I did mention earlier, you can play it in the dark and I'm going through the full brightness settings now. Unfortunately, with my translucent shell, as you can see on the higher brightness, there is some leaking of the light from the IPS screen, but this is a very little issue. As for size, this is one of the biggest IPS screen replacements I've seen. It's just a tad bigger than the original, unlike some previous screens that I have done and featured on the channel. And that is pretty much it when it comes to with this IPS screen kit. It is absolutely amazing. I really love it. I'm very happy with it. It's really reasonably priced it looks really good it's not a tiny tiny screen and i absolutely love that the touch center is basically inbuilt to the ribbon cable however these are just my thoughts so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments 